Hi guys, it's Rach. Today I thought would be a good day to do some book chatting. This is the second time I've tried to film this video. My thoughts are a little bit all over the place, but I apologize if I'm really scatterbrained, but I wanted to talk to you guys about the books that I've been reading. For those of you who haven't seen my book chat videos before, basically this is me just chatting to you very casually about the books that I've read recently. It's kind of like mini reviews, but I can also talk about other things as well. Very casual, very relaxed. So I'm going to start with something kind of book related, but it's actually movies, well books being turned into movies. On the weekend I saw The Fault in Our Stars and I've got to say I loved it. I was really really happy with the way it was turned into a movie. I was happy with the characters and the casting and the way the story flowed and it was very emotional. I didn't cry as much as I thought I would but I think it's because, especially since even just the trailers on TV made me cry, but I think it was because I kind of went in there knowing what was going to happen and knowing that it was sad but it was also hopeful and that there would be funny parts and there were actually quite a few funny moments which I was really happy with and I liked that it stayed true to the story. There was a few bits where they kind of like shortened thing but that's fairly common when you have um, books that are turned into movies. So overall, I was really, really happy with it. Let me know if you guys have seen the movie, if you've seen the movie and haven't read the book or if you've read the book and seen the movie and what you thought. I really would like to know I haven't had a lot of issues with any of my favourite books being turned into movies before. The only one that really, really annoyed me was City of Bones. I love that series by Cassandra Clare. It was supposed to be three and then it became six books and City of Heavenly Fire, which is the sixth. And what I think will be the final book, unless all of a sudden she tacks on another three like she did the last time. Um, it's just recently been released. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on it yet, but when I do, I will read it. And if you've read it yet, let me know what you thought. Don't give away any spoilers because I really want to see how it all, all comes together at the end. But um, I would be interested if you guys enjoyed that series and what you thought of the movie. I was really annoyed with a lot of the casting. What they were thinking when they cast Mangus, I have no idea. That didn't work for me. I wasn't super happy with Jace either. I just I didn't like the, the fact that they gave away the biggest plot twist in the book, in the movie straight away. I mean the whole the whole big twist in the first book about them them being brother and sister is what kind of spurred on so many moments in the next two books and um, it, it was really kind of to me unique the fact that you kind of this author had built up this sexual tension between these two characters and then you get to the end of the book and I remember sitting and talking to my mum about it and she had never even read the story and I was sitting in my old kitchen and I said, I don't know what this author's doing. I was like, I want these people to be together and then she tells me that they're brother and sister. I was just like, it was so like bizarre to me and so like compelling and then the movie gives away the twist like straight away. I, I, I was just completely disappointed with that. So let me know what you thought. Did you like the movie? Did you think it worked with the book? Did you have the same issues that I did? Because I just... Even though that was so long ago, I still get riled up about it. Anyway, let's talk about some books that I've been reading recently. I have two books from Susan Mallory. These are the next two books in her Fool's Gold series. This is like book 13 and 14 or 14 and 15. I'm not really sure because there's just so many of them. But I've mentioned the Fool's Gold series before. It's based on a fictional town, I think set like somewhere in like California. Um, but it doesn't actually exist. And it's just this perfect little town. And we've met so many of the characters and they each kind of get their own adult romance kind of story. I've, I've fallen in love with a lot of the secondary characters and I just really love that I feel like this is a real place. And if it was a real place, I really want to go live there. Um, unfortunately, I can't. So these books were based on um, Taryn and Angel. So we'd met both of those characters in the, in the um, last couple of books. This is when we met and I really, really enjoyed it because they're both kind of people that sort of aren't very big on relationships and sort of seeing them get together and, and, and fall in love was really, really cool. And then the next book is based on um, Sam and Delina. And Delina is another person who you've met in previous books. So that's what I mean by saying that like the characters are kind of all linked and you see people, you can see people in like three or four previous stories and then they'll eventually get their own story. I really liked theirs because theirs is kind of like this um, misunderstanding in that they had had previously had a one night stand and he got spooked thinking that she was all in about love and marriage and things like that because he randomly found a list of ways to get guys to marry you and a room full of wedding dresses. 
And that sounds pretty scary, I think, to anybody, but we find out sort of their, their reasons behind this. And I think their story is really cute. I, I did really enjoy it. The rest of the stuff that I have here for you guys is on my Kindle app because that's where I do the bulk of my reading. I've read quite a few books recently. Um, one that I wanted to mention that I actually read a while ago but haven't had a... I don't know why I skipped it in my last book chat. This is Full Measures by Rebecca Yaros, I think is how you say the name. This one was based on a, a girl who's in, a, she's in like early college, maybe in like her first, first year of college and she comes home and one day there's a knock on the door and she finds out that her father has been killed while um, in the army overseas. So it's very, very sad. Her mother kind of goes off the deep end a little bit and she has to look after her younger sister and younger brother, both of who are dealing with it in different ways and it's a kind of a very tragic time. And at the same time, she's obviously dealing with her own grief and trying to keep it together for the rest of the family. And she meets this guy who, somebody she actually had a crush on, I think he was a few years ahead of her in school, but somebody who she just thought would never notice her. And he kind of becomes her support and when she's going through this this tough time and, and they sort of fall in love and then she kind of finds out that he has a secret that he hasn't been telling her about that could kind of change her whole perception of their relationship because there's a lot of drama there, there are some quite sad parts as well as some some really happy parts as well so I did really enjoy that story I don't know if it's a series or not but um, if it is a series then I'll, I'll, I'll read more of them I don't think there was any kind of cliffhanger or anything at the end if for those of you who don't like that kind of thing the next series I want to talk about was by T.K. Lee. Um, the first book was A Beautiful Mess, then we had A Tragic Wreck, and then Gorgeous Chaos. So I've just finished reading all three, and I have mixed feelings on this. I often talk about books that I really love in these book chats, but I do read books that sometimes I don't love as much. And this series, it... it I had it had the things that I liked, but I also had things that I didn't like. Um, it was based on... Uh, a, a girl who we meet who's like an adult now, I think she's in her mid to late 20s and she lost her parents in a car crash when she was really young and she was in that same car crash and she doesn't remember anything from her life before, um, I think she's about six years old when this happened, she doesn't remember anything about her life previous. She's grown up sort of being on her own a lot and she doesn't do relationships, she doesn't do attachments with any kind of person because she feels like anybody that you get attached to or love gets taken away from you. We kind of fast forward and we see her now and she was being attacked by somebody and runs away and, and she's basically rescued by this guy Alex and um, she kind of starts um, to get to know him and form a relationship with him and we kind of find out throughout the books that he actually knew her when she was young like before the car crash and, and he loved her then and he loves her now but he keeps this, this secret from her because she um, the reason that this all happened is that she's in danger. I think the issue is is that all three books, it's not even until the third book that she really finds out what is going on. And I think that kind of felt dragged out. She also makes some really silly decisions. And I mean, I don't know what I would feel if I had had that kind of past. Maybe I would run from relationships the way that she does. But I wasn't super happy with the way that either of them dealt with their issues in A Tragic Wreck, which was the second book. And I didn't like the fact that there were too many secrets kept all the way until Gorgeous Chaos, which like I said is the third book. There were also some pretty, I don't know, there was just things that didn't make sense. Her, her line of thinking, to me, to be perfectly frank, came out stupid at some points. So there were a lot of issues. There was a good twist at the end that I didn't actually guess. Some people I've read other reviews said that they guessed it early on, so I mean... That, that kind of depends. I mean, I kept on wanting to finish the series, but at the same time, there, it left a lot to be desired. So I don't know whether I'd necessarily recommend that one, um, but I did finish it. And if you do read the synopsis of the books and decide that you want to read it, then I wouldn't say don't, but um, it just wasn't my favorite series that I've read recently. Moving on, a few books I did love. Jessica Park is an author who I read when I first started getting into more indie authors, these authors that sort of publish only on like ebooks to begin with. And I loved Flat Out Love and I've also spoken about Flat Out Matt which was kind of a little spin-off. There has since been a story that's been added which is Flat Out Celeste and I knew nothing about it until I randomly saw it on Twitter and I was like, oh my god, I have to get this book straight away. 
Celeste was the younger sibling in Flat Out Love and she I think she was like a, a teenager she might have been like 13 in that series we're kind of jumping ahead until I think she's about 17 or eight, maybe 18 in this story she's in her final year of high school and she's preparing to go to college she is extremely smart and there are some really witty lines in this book I mean all the stories were really well written and had some I, I, I always compare the dialogue to something like Gilmore Girls or Veronica Mars I always really admired those shows because of the dialogue the writers were just so witty and quick and I just I really really enjoyed those and I, I kind of compare the writing and the dialogue in um, the flat out love books to that anyway she meets a guy who's uh, recruiting for colleges and it's her first kind of chance to meet somebody who kind of really appreciates her for her and she sort of starts to, to fall for him and at the same time she also grows as a person and realizes that she doesn't need to be as isolated as she has been. She starts to sort of make some friends and I just, I really enjoyed hearing more about all the characters. I've also read another one from Abby Glines. This is another novel in the Seabreeze series which I've been reading from the very start. This is Hold On Tight where we see Dwayne's story and Dwayne is a person that's been mentioned in a lot of the, the previous stories a lot, um, and I really enjoyed his character. And then we also meet a new female protagonist, Sienna. So I don't know if his younger brother has ever been mentioned in previous books, but basically we kind of start with Sienna and um, Dwayne's younger brother Dustin dating when they're in high school. He probably wasn't the best boyfriend, but she loved him anyway. Uh, and then she accidentally falls pregnant. At the same time she finds this out, um, Dustin is, is killed in a car crash and she has very religious parents. She gets sent away to live with her aunt while she has the baby as of. And then we fast forward about six years and she's actually moved back and Dwayne I guess stumbles across and realizes that there's a, this nephew that he never had and he may have another chance with Sienna because we realize that in the past he had um, maybe had, had feelings for Sienna back when they were in high school even though he was a little bit older than her. It was a really nice story. Abby Glines does great new adult romance novels. They have steaminess, they have a little bit of drama, they have that, that happy ending that you're hoping for and I, I, I really enjoyed this addition to the Seabreeze series. I have another series, another author that I really enjoy who is Marie Force. She has a new series called Green Mountain. Um, or a Green Mountain Romance. I mentioned the first one a little while ago and then there's a new book called Let Me Hold Your Hand or I Want to Hold Your Hand. I think it's been published under different names depending on where it's published but this was the second second book in the series. I really am enjoying this series. The series is, is based around a family that has 10 children which to me is a little bit over the top unless you're sort of going the religious route but works for readers because it means you're guaranteed about 10 books, one for each sibling. This one we talk about Hannah and she had a husband who died in um, I think in Iraq or in, in the war somewhere about seven years ago and she hasn't really dated or anything since but one of her old friends, a friend that was also a friend of her husband, he kind of started to develop feelings for her about two years after her husband passed away and has been in love with her for basically the last five years and it's about kind of them potentially developing a new relationship and her kind of getting over trying to get over her the fact that her husband's passed away and that she kind of needs to move on and the guilt that you kind of would feel with that and their friends and whether people are going to accept you and, and accept this new relationship especially if you live in a small town like um, they do so I really enjoyed that story I'm looking forward to the rest of the books and I also love the element that the the father of these children of these I call them children but I mean they're in their late 20s 30s kind of thing him and their grandfather are kind of manipulating the situation. I think they've kind of decided that they, they want their children married off and they, they want grandbabies and great grandbabies so they kind of um, I guess pay a little bit like fairy godmother-esque and, and maybe instigate situations to get um, their children in the relationships that they should be. Anyway, I, I kind of like that little sneaky element to it. I think it's really cute and just adds another layer to the story. What else have I read for you guys? I read Fangirl, which was a recommendation by a few of you. Um, I can't remember exactly who it was, but I know that somebody left the recommendation in the comments on one of my videos and, I, and then a few of you jumped on and said, yeah, I really, really enjoy that book. It's by Rainbow Rowell. I think I'm, I'm saying that right. <clears throat> This was a different book for me because it didn't, it wasn't sort of super romance 
necessarily based. It was more like a coming of age story, and I, there was a romance element into as part of it as well. But it was more like chick fiction kind of thing and I really enjoyed it. It was well written. I thought Kath was a fantastic character, very kind of real about um, going off to college for the first time and not sort of knowing your place and not being a person who is really like the life of the party or very social. That's that's definitely me. I, I think if I had to go off to college I would be the person who would like sit in my room and not know not go out to parties and stuff unless I was invited and I mean she has a um, a kind of more of a vivacious twin who who makes friends and, and goes out to parties and kind of changes a bit and she's kind of left behind in a way but she makes friends with her roommate and the person who she assumes is her roommate's boyfriend and they kind of help her grow a little bit they're, they're a couple of years ahead of her and you kind of start to see her, her coming out of her shell a little bit and there's this element of fan fiction that she writes fan fiction for a a story which in the books is very similar to Harry Potter but it's Simon um a different I guess it's been changed and you actually get to read her fan fiction so if you enjoy that that's like another layer to the story as well I read another two books from a new series by Jennifer Probst the first book in the series is called Searching for Someday yes and in this book we meet Kate and Slade and Kate and two of her friends own a uh, matchmaking agency and she has, is, is matchmaking partly because she, she really enjoys it but she also has a special kind of gift in which when she touches people that are meant to be together she can kind of feel it she gets like a shock kind of thing there's this it's mainly just a sort of an adult romance novel but there is that like slight supernatural twist to it in that that she has this kind of touch this kind of gift that like I said, that she can kind of sense when people are soulmates or are meant to be together. We meet Slade, who is the main protagonist, because his younger sister is has, has signed up to the the matchmaking agency, and he's worried about her because she's had bad relationships in the past. But he's being the older, protect, overprotective big brother. He thinks that matchmaking is a sham, and that he's just that the, the agency is just trying to take the like his younger sister's money. So what he does is he. Um, signs up for the matchmaking agency as well and Kate is, is kind of matching him to people and, and they, they're working together and as they kind of go along he kind of realizes that she may be the person that he's supposed to be matched with and she um, does feel this for the first time that, that he's the person that she's supposed to be with but she is very against it because she thinks that he's not the kind of guy that she would ever work with. She's all about love and happy endings and he's a divorce lawyer and is totally anti-marriage and relationships and long term and things like that. So they definitely clash but at the same time have a lot of chemistry and stories about them kind of how they get together and how they move forward. And you also hear about the sister and about her kind of relationship going forward and, and the friends as well. The second book is Searching for Perfect and this one is Kennedy and Nate's story. Kennedy is one of the girls who also works for the matchmaking agency and she uh, is trying to help Nate who is a rocket scientist and he's a bit of a nerd and he doesn't have the, the best track record with women but he, he wants to settle down and he really wants relationships. It turns out that she starts to fall for him and he starts to fall for her and they kind of again resist it because at the same time um, she doesn't really want a long-term relationship and that's what he's looking for. It's kind of the opposite. Usually it's the, the girl who wants a long-term relationship and the guy that doesn't. But in this book it, it goes the other way and I guess there's also the element that when you are at a matchmaking agency, should you really be matchmaking somebody to yourself? And there, there's that kind of twist in it as well. Anyway, I really like these books. I like I love the idea of a matchmaking agency and I like hearing about how that works, at least in the story. And I love the characters. I'm looking forward to the next one because I know there should be at least one more one more book because there's another lady who works at the matchmaking agency who needs her own little story. Okay, and then the last books that I wanted to talk to you guys about were the Broken series by Chloe Walsh. And the first one is Break My Fall. And this book we meet Lee who um, has had a really bad sort of life growing up. Her father is abusive and she decides to finally break free, run away and she runs to uh, one of her friends who's been going to college and she lives with her boyfriend and an another guy in a house and um, she goes to hopefully go stay with her until she can get a job and, and get on her feet. 
and there she meets Kyle who's one of the the roommates and um, they kind of start a little bit of relationship he's attracted to her but she's obviously very skittish and he isn't one for relationships he's a bit of a man whore anyway it, it's kind of about their story and about um, how they get together there's definitely some sort of um, negative elements to it and bad things that happen and there's a lot of drama. Second book is Fall to Pieces so there are some kind of quite dramatic things that happen in the second book. Didn't really expect them to happen but um, overall I, I did enjoy the series. Uh, I don't know if there'll be another one or not. It says series and series is more usually more than two so so we'll see but it was an interesting story not necessarily my favorite but I did enjoy the books and they did keep me wanting to read what was going to happen next and that is I think everything that I've read recently I hope you guys have enjoyed hearing about it as always I will list all the books in the description box below so if you want to check them out I would recommend having a look at them on Amazon or Goodreads reading the synopsis because their synopsis are much better than me trying to explain the books to you without also giving away the whole story which is so hard um, and if you like the idea of them then definitely check them out I'd as always love to hear your recommendations and if you do end up reading any of these books let me know in the comments come back later if you go off and read them because I want to hear what your thoughts are if there's things that you liked you didn't like that's a whole point of these books chat videos is I want to be able to actually chat with you rather than me just talking to you about a whole heap of books I know they're very rambly but if you enjoy reading then you, you'll probably understand and other than that I'm gonna go I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I will see you guys all in my next video bye